G'day, I'm Jamie Roberts, back with another episode of Gold Rushes of Australia. Gold was discovered first at Lambing Flat in March 1860 by a black African named Alexander the Yankee, who was working as a cook for a local farmer. By the time news of the discovery there hit the Sydney papers in July, there were around 150 diggers working there, but gold was pretty thin on the ground and many were leaving. As what was happening on other gold fields, the Chinese soon turned up, started working the ground previously worked over by the Europeans, and they had a fair bit of luck. The newspapers reported that there were a couple of thousand Chinese newly arrived in Sydney Harbour heading for the gold fields, and of course they called for a ban on immigration from China. By the end of 1860, there were more than 2,000 Chinese diggers working on Lambing Flat and around 12,000 Europeans. It was in December that the trouble started. Anti-Chinese sentiment was raging amongst the diggers, as it was in society in general. A group of Chinese diggers were driven off the goldfield diggings and there were reports of death and serious injury. Some diggers even bragged of sculping the Chinese and cutting their ears off. One of the common complaints that Europeans used when complaining about the Chinese was their use of water. Now according to the Europeans, the Chinese wasted a lot of water when mining and used unhygienic practices in letting unsanitary water flow back into the creek. In late January 1861, there was another riot, despite there being 80 mounted police stationed at Lambing Flat. Followed closely, there was a public meeting where around 1,500 European diggers called for the banning or the expulsion of the Chinese from the goldfields. Now this meeting ended with a march to a nearby Chinese camp where the Europeans attacked the Chinese with sticks and burned their camp down. This time a number of diggers were arrested for rioting but this only added to the tension at Lambing Flat. Hundreds of diggers descended on the courthouse demanding the release of their associates who were then granted bail. The next day they appeared in court, got a verbal rap over the knuckles and were then just set free. The European diggers tried lobbying the New South Wales government with a petition containing 3,400 signatures calling for the expulsion of the Chinese from the Lambing Flat diggings. The Gold Commissioner tried moving the Chinese to a separate piece of land, but this didn't work either. Another 200 Chinese were attacked by around 40 European diggers, had their camp burnt down and their possessions destroyed. Interestingly, the first Gold Commissioner on Lambing Flat, David Dixon, had set up his offices and camp 20 miles away on a sheep farm. Now Dixon had spent most of his life working behind a counter at a drapery when he was way out of his depth of what was happening at Lambing Flat. Sure enough, Dixon rode the 100 kilometres to Yass to ask for reinforcements. A few days later, a P. Cloat turned up to take over the management of the diggings and then a Captain Henry Zouche fronted up with a detachment of mounted police. Now as this was all happening, the New South Wales government were doing their best to try and push through anti-immigration laws specifically against the Chinese. But unfortunately, due to complicated parliamentary processes, it took them until the end of the year to put them through. I really have to reflect on what the Chinese were up against in coming to Australia to dig for gold. They were copying it from all sides. To begin with, the shady ship owners, they were exploited coming over here, the loan sharks. Once they were here, they were hated by the other diggers. The newspapers were spewing anti-Chinese rhetoric every second day. The government were doing their best to try and keep them out by changing the laws. But still the Chinese came and still they found gold. They were attacked regularly, but they would not be deterred. So how do you sum up the Chinese character? Were they incredibly brave? Were they stupid? Was their relentless desire to find gold also their failing? We have to remember that in the 1860s, it was very, very different times. It was not uncommon for the British in particular to treat other races very harshly. Now, the British were very open about their feeling or their sense of superiority compared to other races. Now, these views permeated every aspect of modern culture at the time. What you read in newspapers, what you read in books, what you were taught in schools. Who could belong, who couldn't? On the 25th of February 1861, around 200 soldiers, mounted police and artillery were sent from Sydney to Lambing Flat. 
At Campbelltown, they climbed onto 10 double-decker buses, each drawn by four horses, and took around two weeks to make the 400-kilometre journey to the troubled goldfields. So did this large military and police presence on Laoming Flat make things safer for the Chinese? I'll tell you what happened on next week's episode of Gold Rushes of Australia, right here on the MyLab Show. Thanks for watching. Thank you.